Hi, and welcome to the fifth Getting Started with Plexus 2D session. We're going to talk here about the mesh mode. First, we're going to do a quick recap of the different modes, and then we're going to focus on mesh generation. How to set up different mesh densities, which can be important for your analysis. So we focus on global coarseness, but also how to locally refine the elements and how this is displayed in your geometry. And then how you can inspect generated mesh to judge if the mesh is sufficiently fine enough. The case that we'll be using is the dry excavation using a tieback wall. So the workflow of Plexus to the input, it consists of five steps. In the previous session, we already discussed the soil mode and the structures mode. And now we're going to focus here on the mesh mode. In the previous session, we ended with the structures mode, as you can see here. So we're going to now go to the mesh mode. And as you can see, the visualization again changes here. We can see that the colors in the main area has been changed. We can see gray and green elements here. And we have a new sidebar, which consists of selection and multi-selection options. We can have an option to check the geometry. So we program can give an investigation of if elements are very close together. Then we have here tools to refine the mesh, coarsen the mesh, and the reset local coarseness. With these tools, we can, for instance, activate them and we can click here on the geometry and you can see that the colors change. Coarsen the mesh means we will get a mesh density which will have larger elements. And finally, we can here use the reset option. And before we're going to generate our mesh, first a quick explanation of the different options that we have. The mesh generation works that we have a global coarseness. This defines the average element size based on the model dimensions. This global coarseness, we set this when we click the generate mesh button. The local refinement, basically it's a local coarseness factor. And that means that we can have the element size be locally refined or locally be coarsened. The element size factor is actually the Local coarseness factor times the global coarseness, and this gives the information to generate the early denser or the coarser mesh. The color codes work as follows. Uh, if you are in the draw area, to represent the refinement, the colors are indicated as green is refined. And the lighter green, it becomes more finer. And yellow means that it has been coarsened, so that its local coarseness is coarser than the global coarseness, so that will give us bigger elements in that area. And the lighter it becomes, the coarser the mesh becomes, so the bigger the elements becomes in that area. And of course, that's important because with the smaller the elements, the more accurate we can do the calculation. But it also means that the calculation will become more heavy on the computational performance. So that means the, the calculation will become slower when you use more elements. So you should strike a balance here to set the right coarseness for your calculation. So how does it look? This local coarseness, select this here, the lighter green, the more refined this option will be. You can also check it here, is that the coarseness factor here is set to a value of 0 0.1768. This is our local coarseness factor. Now the default of this is, if you do reset local coarseness, and we can also use right click to control the local elements, actually the value will be reset to one. Now if we have a element which is coarser, so maybe we have a factor of two, you can see that we have this yellowish color. And if actually we're going to set this to four, you can see that the color becomes lighter yellow. So I will just reset the coarseness here. And once we click the generate mesh button, here we can see the element distribution set to medium. And we can have a general medium mesh, coarse mesh, or very coarse mesh, or maybe we want to have a fine mesh or a very fine mesh. For this case, I will stick with the medium option and let's generate the mesh. You can see it's rather quick. And now the automatic mesh generation process takes into account these local 
refinement, so all the structural elements that you see here. So we have the retaining walls, the ground anchors. These are all locally refined, so we have better approximation of the structural forces. And the automatic mesh generation automatically takes that into account, so you do not have to specify the mesh yourself. Plexus will automatically create a triangulated mesh for you. Now, once that is done, here at the bottom we can see how many elements have been generated and how many nodes. Now, if we go to the view mesh option, we can actually inspect the mesh. The output program will be started. So here we are, and here we see the generated mesh, and we can see these triangles here. These are our finite elements. And here you can also inspect, for instance, quality. And the quality gives us an indication of the shape of the element. So if we do not have really spiky triangles or really flat triangles, which will not be that good for your calculation. So in this case, we can see that the quality does not have a low value for the minimum value. So we will accept this and we go back to the input program. So this concludes the mesh generation session here. And I hope to see you back for the next sessions where we're actually going to define our different construction stages to simulate a deep excavation project.